Hi, I'm Johnny Rose, one of the co-founders of Quinn Tech City, and this evening I'm here with Laura Fisher of Tree Press. Um, well, first of all, Laura, thank you very much for coming along this evening, and I'm um, speaking to Quinn Tech City. Probably the first question I want to ask you is: is what is Tree Press, and how did the idea come about? So what is TreePress? Uh, it is an online marketplace where people can buy and sell uh, theatre, basically. So mm -hmm. what we do is we connect the people who write plays uh, with the teachers, schools, community theatre groups who need to perform them. And we don't just sell the words on the page. We also sell all of the associated copyright that uh, kind of comes with a theatre performance. So Okay. It's... And where did the idea come from? So the idea uh, ori originally came out of the challenges that Adrienne, my co-founder, faced in the classroom. Uh, she had a real problem with the distinct lack of scripts that were available. Um, once you kind of get to a certain point, you've performed Annie and Oliver Twist uh, and you don't want to start again. Uh, and so you're either left to search the world and figure out where there's something, something new and something interesting to do, uh, or you have to write your own. And so she became a playwright, and when she became a playwright, we realised that actually publishing and distributing your work was the root of the problem. Uh, and so we kind of thought the way we should solve this problem in schools and community theatre groups is by actually fixing dis distribution uh, of theatre. Interesting. With, um, I was just thinking to myself, with any online marketplace, there's mm -hmm. always two sides to it, right? There's Correct. like the, the buyers and suppliers. And um, I'm interested to hear how successfully you found onboarding and creating that marketplace. So you have, essentially, you have the teachers in the schools, and then you have playwrights and, mm -hmm. and the sort of a, a sort of tender people around that. How have you found finding the schools and finding playwrights, and which have been easier to build up and grow? So um, we kind of realised a, a similar thing quite early on, uh, and what you often have to do when you have this relationship between um, supply and demand effectively, uh, and so for us the supply is the content side, is that one of these, you have to fake one of the sides, you've got to grow one of the sides really big to act as the catalyst for the marketplace to kick off. Yep. And for us we found that the crucial point uh, was actually on the content side. We knew that the teachers and community theatre groups and um, amateur performances really struggle and they have an identifiable problem. Uh, but if we brought them all um, and said, we're going to solve this for you and there was nothing to sell, uh, then they would probably get a bit upset with us. So we spent the last eight months focusing solely on content. And so we found playwrights all over the world um, from as far as Trinidad and Tobago to Albuquerque, New Mexico, oh, great. London, New York, yep. uh, and also seeking out uh, these hubs of content that has been previously unavailable. So that's uh, things like significant national theatres uh, in both the US uh, and the UK, um, youth theatres who commission work um, in the kind of tens over the last couple of years, uh, and then also um, places like museums or, or stuff where they're commissioning work formally. And so we kind of gathered all that content up essentially uh, and gave organisations, publishers and individual playwrights a home. And so we launch uh, actually in a week's time publicly oh, out of our private beta okay. uh, with our teachers and schools as well. Interesting. Now, I wasn't able to hear your, your part when you started talking about your own personal journey, but what would be really interesting is what's, um, what's been, it's quite generic, but what's the biggest lesson you've learnt in the past two years of just getting this undertaking going? What's the, big, yeah, what's the biggest lesson you've learnt about yourself? I think what the biggest to... lesson I've learnt um, across the entire um, thing is that people are always more important. Uh, you can have a great idea and you can have uh, the right funding and you can even have the right timing, uh, but you have to care about the people and that's the people internally uh, and yeah. it's your team around you. Um, that's the people that are invested in you, either your mentors uh, or your investors uh, financially or even non-exec directors. Um, and then you also have to care about your people that you're selling to, so your customers. And so we've really found that focusing on the people side of what we're doing, despite the fact that we just happen to run a software company, uh, we cannot forget about people. And I think that's been an important lesson personally as well. So I came back in and heard that at, you're about to take on your first, I think your first full-time technical, your C mm -hmm. CTO. But what's always really interesting, you'll have heard this story tons and tons, is people always struggling to get their software idea off the ground if they're non-technical. Mm. So I was wondering, what advice can you give to people? How, how did you sort of fake it until you could make it with the technical aspect? <laughs> what ideas or sites should people visit to find tech talent that can help you? Yeah, definitely. Then, I think there's a huge amount that you can actually do before tech. Um, we made a conscious decision to... Um, not build. Um, 
with this whole kind of minimum viable product movement uh, and the lean startup, uh, there's a temptation to start coding right away. Uh, but the reality is that even if you start coding, you'll probably throw it away. And so I'd much rather throw away a drawing uh, than I would a couple hundred lines of code. And so we actually started with just drawing out our idea and shoving it in front of people on paper. Um, and that's something anyone can do. Um, I had some kind of basic graphic design skills and the ability to take those paper mock-ups and put them into um, designed mock-ups and then I taught myself, uh, self-taught how to wireframe and uh, also then how to use some tools that you can pretend like you've got a great product like Squarespace or WordPress or basic things that can get you um, to a point where you've got a really good idea. Um, if we had have started on the kind of lean startup approach and coding from day one, mm -hmm. uh, we would have built a forum. Um, but what we learned by taking it slow and actually staying away from the tech uh, is that what we needed to build was a software management platform for theatre uh, that would handle digital rights. And so what we did was we now don't have any legacy code, we're stepping into this really nice and fresh, and so we're bringing on uh, the technical e expertise uh, along the way. Nice. Okay, and my final question is, where can people go to find out more about Tree Press? Where are you online or where can we found offline, like at events or...? Yeah, um, the obvious one is www.treepress.org. Uh, we would love for everyone uh, not only to visit, uh, but also tell a teacher. That would be brilliant if you know a teacher, even if they're maths or science or history uh, or art and, and obviously importantly drama, tell a teacher or just tell a school, um, email your old teacher and let them know that we're here. Um, and we're also on Twitter um, at Tree Press, and we also use the hashtag hashtag Team Tree Press, and we follow that um, all day and all night. Uh, and in terms of events, we are at loads of the stuff at Makerversity, which is where we call home in Somerset House, uh, and also with Bethnal Green Ventures, and then a number of the education shows, and, and anywhere we can, like places like Croydon Tech City. Oh, brilliant! Good work, well, Laura. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks.